Hello and welcome to another out of spec testing video. This is an invisible torch and I am passing it. Thank you. It's a West. very, very heavy one but I'm grateful to be here. I'm gonna be on the Out of Spec testing channel a little more. I'm gonna be taking some weight off of Kyle and Scott so that they can focus on important things and growing the channel and big stuff and I can do the maybe very tedious slow things and help accelerate the growth of Out of Spec. So I'm excited to be here. And we are so excited that you are joining us, Wes, and I'm glad that this is the first video you get to do on the testing channel. Heck yeah. We had you in a drag race on the one lap channel. That yeah. was really fun. That was. And uh, Wes agreed. That was sort of your like interview day, more yeah. or less. <laughs> it really, yeah, it kind of felt that way. <laughs> and so now Wes said, you know, you're, you're an EV enthusiast. You have a bunch of electric cars, a lot of experience. Yeah. And um, he's like, look, I live close to the track, rock and roll, do the test. And here you are. Yeah. Heck yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful surprise and connection I made and things just worked out, timing, and so I'm very excited. And same here, yeah. so the viewers will get to know you. You'll still see the rest of the Out of Spec team, especially myself on the testing channel. It's actually my favorite channel because I love developing tests and running cars through them. But ultimately, we just have to like kind of do repeatable things with electric cars and yep. you'll be a great uh, steward of the channel. So thank Absolutely. you for joining us. Of course. Uh, this is a Tesla press car, which they're doing now, which is so exciting and they sent us this to make a bunch of videos with, and it's a Tesla Model 3 standard. It's the cheapest Tesla you can have. Very nice, by the way. It is a nice car. It's a great car for the price. I, I really do, I agree with you with a lot better than the Model Y for the price. Yeah, Model Y <laughs> standard, not good. Yeah. This one, great. I agree. <laughs> um, so we just ran the Tesla Model 3 long range rear wheel drive in our run to zero, and uh -huh. it was where we did FSD runs out. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting to see what happened with the system. So I'll leave that linked below. One of the highest viewed testing videos we've ever posted. Really? Because it was what happens <laughs> when FSD says, yeah. runs out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, scary stuff. So anyway, we're gonna see basically in this video, the standard range buffer below zero mm -hmm. versus the long range. Yeah. This video, the run to zeros are, there's no winner or loser. And we have no real opinion in terms of out of spec mm -hmm. as to what is the appropriate thing to do when an electric car runs out of charge. But so many people are worried about running out of charge in a 30 mile commute. We're gonna show you <laughs> exactly what happens when you run a car completely to dead so that you can see the warnings, you can see the power limitation, and you can see at least the buffer below zero on this car in this day in these conditions. Because Wes, as you know, buffers are not always the same. Yeah. And especially if a yeah. battery is frozen or ages, we make no promises. Yeah, for sure. No and guarantees, but. Yeah. So the long range Model 3 went 30 miles past zero in the test mm -hmm. and had 5.9 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. That feels too much. Oh yeah. Yeah, that, that feels like you're almost not giving it to the customers that paid for the range. Exactly, because yeah. EPA runs until it's dead. So EPA yeah. says big number, but if your car hits 0% 30 miles mm -hmm. before it runs out, it just doesn't feel accessible, Yeah, even though for it sure. is. So in this test, we always start the run to zeros at 5% state of charge. We'll look at the battery indications, the warnings that pop up, the power limits, and uh, we're gonna run the now the smaller battery, the standard range out to zero. This battery uses the same cell, the Panasonic cell, as the long range car. Mm -hmm. It just has fewer of them in there. Okay. So that car was at 270 volts dead. I'm really curious to see what the voltage of this car is when it falls down on the floor. Okay. Yeah. So we'll pull up service mode after it dies. But Wes, you'll take everyone through the run to zero. Absolutely. The Model 3 standard. And uh, thank you for joining. Absolutely. Oh, let's get on with it. Sounds great. <laughs> okay, so here we are with the standard Model 3. It is at 5%. And the cell temps are now, they've cooled down a little bit, but we're still well over 30 Celsius on the minimum. And so plenty warm to get as much as we can out of this pack. Knowing what we know about Teslas, this will probably be many, many miles past zero. So let's do this. All right, we're giving FSD a try to run down some of this percentage. We'll see how she does around the track. It seemed to have performed remarkably well in the past and seems to be doing so now. And keep in mind in these tests, we try to run between 35 and 55 miles an hour, maintaining 55 on these straights and try to hold that until the car won't anymore. And then we just, of course, keep going until there's nothing left. 
So far we are still about 4%, probably getting close to 3 at this point. We've done 4.5 miles and still just chugging along, no problem. 1% state of charge, we've done about 11 miles and when it hits zero I'm going to restart the trip computer and at that point we will then see how many kilowatt hours below zero we get which is probably going to be a lot according to what we've seen from Tesla in recent times and how many miles we get. Okay, we have just hit 0% state of charge. I'm going to reset trip A. We are now reset and ready to see how many kilowatt hours we can get below zero because we know Tesla likes their bottom buffers. We're at 2.9 miles below zero and I'm going to go ahead and take a guess on this. I'm going to say this is the smaller, I think it's the 69.5 kilowatt hour battery. I'm going to guess 25 miles below zero is probably what we're going to see. Still feeling very good, have a small power limitation, but nothing crazy at all. There's Wes out ripping the Model 3 standard, cruising along. Looking pretty good. I'm all queued up with the Charge Rigs trailer in case we happen to need it. So I'll go pick him up when he dies. All right, we are now 1.7 kilowatt hours below 0%. And we have quite a bit of power limit when I accelerate out of this back corner onto the straightaway. But nothing so serious that you couldn't drive the car. Still doing very well. 2.5 kilowatt hours below zero. Foot to the floor, that's what we're doing. So can still get up to speed, but definitely starting to slow down. So it hasn't done this since probably 3%, but it did just say plan your next charge. Don't really know why right now, but 2.8 kilowatt hours below zero. We've done 13.4 miles and power limitation is there, but not too terrible. All right, I just got a unable to drive battery charge level too low, um, but of course it's still driving. So we will just keep going. 3.3 kilowatt hours used and 15.6 miles below zero. And here is the straightaway and we are completely floored. Still able to get up to a speed that would be safe, but I don't think this would be highway usable at this point. Because we're barely hitting 55 at the start finish line. I don't think this would be highway usable at this point. Because we're barely hitting 55 at the start finish line. Now at 3.4, 3.5 kilowatt hours used, 16 miles. Things are getting a little interesting now. Power limit getting a little further down. I have to say, Tesla really does make this a very linear drop in power. You can feel it in the throttle pedal. So when you're dying, you really do feel it linearly. And this feels very natural. I mean, I'm definitely running out of power, but it is very predictable and very slowly coming to a stop. This isn't scary or sudden at any at all. So one good thing about the big buffer is you at least get a very safe car below zero and it seems very linear, at least while the car is new. Okay, it looks like we're getting towards the end. That is floored and we are just barely accelerating. We are at four kilowatt hours below zero and almost 20 miles, 19.5 miles. And we are coming out onto the straightaway and that will tell a lot about its ability to stay at any reasonable speed on the roads. So way below zero here, we are flooring it out of the corner and wow, look at the acceleration on that. Um, yeah, this wouldn't be safe to drive on a road anymore, but it does let you maneuver. We'll probably get only a little bit more, maybe one or two more laps, but that's going to be it. Pretty close to the 25 miles I was predicting, but very linear, very safe, feels good overall. I can see the hazards are on the Model 3 right now. Looks like it's dying, so I'm coming out to go 
<laughs> rescue him so we don't leave the battery dead for too long. Let's go. Oh, we just got pull over safely, vehicle shutting down. That just happened at 4.2 kilowatt hours and 20.5 miles. Um, it is still letting me drive. It may still let me drive for quite some time. I don't know. Let's see. Foot to the floor. We are just barely gaining. Oh, hazards are on. There's nothing sudden. Oh, I think I heard a contactor blow. Uh, yep, that's it. So contactor just went and she's coasting. So th I was just saying that didn't feel that felt linear and it was until right then and it really did just stop all of a sudden. Our final result is 4.2 kilowatt hours, 20.9 miles. Let me pull over here and get the DC fast charging trailer to pick us up. And okay, here we are waiting on the DC fast charging trailer. Um, typical stuff we see with Tesla when you get to the very bottom. Like I said, 4.2 kilowatt hours and 20.9 miles. Definitely less than the long range, but I still think it's a little excessive to have that much that the customer doesn't normally see and wouldn't really use. And here he is, dead with the hazards on. I'm gonna pull the trailer up right next to him. And we're going to get this thing juicing. Let's do it. And here comes Rivian, here to rescue me. Let's get this thing plugged in so the E12 volt doesn't die. Do you need me to pull any closer, Wes, or will it reach? Oh, uh, let's see. I see why Scott has a problem with this a lot of the times because it's hard to tell where the heck. Oh yeah, we're good. We're good, dude. How was your first run to zero? Pretty good. I was telling the uh, telling everybody it felt very linear. I've I've never done a true dead on the side of the road kind. First of time running out in the yeah, EV. I've never actually had to do that, especially not Tesla or anything else with a buffer like that. But yeah, I did 20 point something miles and then felt very linear and safe. How many until, kilowatt hours? Uh, 4.2. Okay, so, yeah. so very similar to the other yeah, standard. It was, uh, I, yeah, it's a little much, I think, for the size battery, but, you know, it, it seems to work well for a lot of new EV owners. They may accidentally go way further than they thought they would, I guess. So, totally. Yeah. Well, good work, dude. Yeah. Dude, awesome. The lighting's perfect right now. It's so cool out here. Let's see what we got going on. Found some glasses. Are these yours? No, no, no. Must be Scott's. Yeah. Uh, so first thing we can look at is this. And you can see we have half a kilowatt going into the battery, but two kilowatts coming in. So it's running some auxiliary loads. We'll shut climate off just to be nice to it. Let's run into service mode. Just under 2,000 miles on this car, so she's fresh. Boom. Enter. <laughs> it's barely charging. 266 volts. So very similar voltage on the floor to the long range mm -hmm. because what they did with the standard pack is they removed cells that were in parallel but kept the same series configuration. So the voltage is up yeah. there. It's a smart way of doing it. Battery pack temp is good. And the final result, 4.2 kilowatt hours past zero. Almost identical to the Model Y Yep. standard buffer which yep, we would, would expect yeah i would hope so at least there's consistency there yeah for... totally absolutely well nice work dude that's a video heck yeah first video on the testing channel that's epic very exciting